Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, as was requested by many of you, I am covering the return of the sample return capsule from the OSIRIS-REx mission. I caught a bit of it live, and for a return of a capsule just holding a bunch of asteroid bits, it was actually pretty exciting. But the logistics that went into this return are actually hugely impressive. So many moving parts, so many things that had to happen at precise moments, so many opportunities for disaster if even one thing went wrong. So let's dive into it and see why the return of this asteroid sample is such a big deal. So yes, on September 24th, 2023, NASA completed its first ever sample return mission from an asteroid, with a science capsule containing material from the asteroid Bennu. But this mission actually began all the way back in 2016. On September 8th of that year, the OSIRIS-REx mission launched from Cape Canaveral. OSIRIS-REx stands for Origins Spectral Interpretation Resource Identification and Security regolith explorer. And regolith, for those who don't know, is just what they call that loose bit of soil that covers solid rock. Its mission was to travel to Bennu, collect a sample of rocks and dust from the surface, and return it back to Earth. But why? Why did we want to do that? It seems like a lot of effort for just an asteroid sample. Well, according to Melissa Morris, the executive director at OSIRIS-X, it all has to do with our origin story. She said, NASA invests in small body missions like OSIRIS-REx to investigate the rich population of asteroids in our solar system that can give us clues about how the solar system formed and evolved. NASA has a great clip explaining why this mission and why Bennu, so I'll play you guys a bit of that now. There are many important reasons for studying asteroids like the target of OSIRIS-REx asteroid Bennu. First and foremost, for me especially, they're geologic remnants from the dawn of our solar system. They're literally the first material that formed around our star, and they represent the building blocks of planets, and we hope, in the case of Bennu, of life, and the reason that Earth may be a habitable planet in the form of delivering water and other important volatile material. When we look at asteroids, which are these primitive objects, these, these little leftover pieces from solar system formation, and we find they may have organics, then that tells us perhaps the conditions for life could have erupted anywhere in the solar system and Earth was just right. When we study meteorites, we think they represent these asteroids and their different histories, but they've all interacted with the Earth's atmosphere, its biosphere, its hydrosphere. And so we don't know what effect just interacting with the Earth has had on these meteorites. We really want to get samples that are pristine, and so we can, we can do all of those things through this mission. OSIRIS-REx is a mission in the NASA New Frontiers program. Our objective is to travel out to a near-Earth asteroid named Bennu, survey that object in great detail to understand its geology, its mineralogy, and composition, ultimately select a single location on the asteroid surface to acquire a sample, and return that material back to the Earth for scientific analysis. Asteroid Bennu is a fragment of the early solar system, an unmelted, unaltered piece of the origin of the solar system and preserved the ingredients, the raw materials that went into the formation of planets, the formation of life. By bringing a sample back to the Earth, such as OSIRIS-REx will do with samples of Bennu in 2023, we'll be able to look at the samples in laboratories around the world to understand in great detail the nature of the sample and its place in the origin of the solar system. So selecting Bennu wasn't just because it was an asteroid that happened to be passing through. Bennu is thought to be made up of material that is around 4.5 billion years old, making it a potential time capsule from the earliest stages of the solar system. And scientists' analysis of that time capsule could tell us a lot more about our own origins for life on Earth. So in 2016, OSIRIS-REx takes off. And then on December 3rd, 2018, after traveling for more than two years and 1.2 billion miles, OSIRIS-REx arrived at Bennu. OSIRIS-REx then mapped the asteroid in detail, while the mission team searched for a safe sample collection site on Bennu's extremely rocky surface with many hazardous boulders. After a year of thorough looking, the mission team selected a sample site called Nightingale, located in a northern crater 460 feet wide. 
The crater was thought to be relatively young, and the rocks and dust were more freshly exposed, thus allowing for a more pristine sample. So on October 20th, 2020, OSIRIS-REx unfurled its robotic arm, and in a first for NASA, briefly touched down on asteroid Bennu in a small, cleared area about the size of a few cars to collect dust and pebbles from its surface in a maneuver known as TAG, or touch and go. And the crew back at Mission Control were just a little excited. And we have touchdown! <laughs> Two days later, the mission team received images that confirmed the spacecraft had collected more than enough material to meet one of its main mission requirements, acquiring at least two ounces or 60 grams of Bennu's surface material. In fact, it is thought the sample size might be well over 200 grams. On October 28, 2020, the mission team sent commands to the spacecraft, instructing it to close the sample return capsule. On April 7, 2021, OSIRIS-REx completed its last flyover of Bennu and started slowly drifting away from the asteroid. And on May 10, 2021, the spacecraft fired its main engines at full throttle for seven minutes and pushed away from the asteroid at 600 miles per hour, setting it on a two and a half year cruise back toward Earth. OSIRIS-REx then orbited the sun a couple of times and then headed back to Earth. Then on September 25th, OSIRIS-REx released the space capsule, which is about the size of a car tire, and then fired its own thrusters to avoid colliding with the Earth and continued to fly off into space. The capsule, now traveling at 27,000 miles per hour, pierced the atmosphere at 10.42 a.m. Eastern Time off the coast of California at an altitude of about 83 miles. Within 10 minutes and with the help of two parachutes, it slowed down to a very smooth 11 miles per hour and landed on the Department of Defense's Utah Test and Training Range at 10.52 Eastern Time. This area is actually the largest restricted airspace in the United States and has been used for previous NASA sample return missions like Genesis and Stardust. And it all worked. All of that launching, traveling billions of miles to an asteroid, doing a new type of landing on that asteroid, getting a sample, leaving the asteroid, traveling billions of miles back, doing a couple orbits around the sun, and then the space capsule detaching from the main spacecraft so it'll land on a specific patch of dirt in Utah, but the main spacecraft will just keep going. We did all that and nothing crashed or exploded or even got lost, it all worked exactly like it was supposed to. The recovery teams collected the sample from the Utah desert with a helicopter carrying the sample. The capsule was taken to a temporary clean room for first disassembly. It will then undergo a process called a nitrogen purge in which nitrogen is pumped into the canister to protect the sample. This prevents any of Earth's atmosphere from entering it as it is shipped to the Johnson Space Center in Houston, where the canister will be opened for the first time so the sample can be analyzed. So you may be asking, what about OSIRIS-REx? Where's it going? Why didn't it come back with the space capsule? Well, with the release of the sample return capsule, OSIRIS-REx completed its primary mission and is now on an extended mission. Because aside from making super dramatic trailers, NASA loves extending its missions. With a new name to reflect its new mission, OSIRIS APEX, which stands for OSIRIS Apophis Explorer, will explore Apophis, an asteroid roughly 1,200 feet in diameter that will come within 20,000 miles of Earth in 2029. OSIRIS APEX will enter orbit around Apophis soon after the asteroid's Earth flyby, providing an unprecedented close-up look at this S-type asteroid. S-type just meaning stony, as in it's made up of silicate materials. It plans to study changes in the asteroid caused by its close flyby of Earth, and it will also use the spacecraft's gas thrusters to attempt to dislodge and study dust and small rocks on and below Apophis's surface. So so yeah, OSIRIS definitely still has some work to do. Also, while OSIRIS was on its primary mission, it actually detected and took an image of a black hole 
30,000 light years from us with its onboard spectrometer. NASA actually made a really cool video about this, which shows the image. So I will post that over on my Patreon if you guys care to go over there and take a look. So all in all, while this may have just looked like the return of an empty space capsule with a few ounces of asteroid in it, it was actually a really epic mission, seven years in the making, that was really firing on all cylinders somewhat literally, in order to make it a success. So I will definitely be curious to see what scientists discover as they begin to analyze the Bennu asteroid sample. And maybe it can help us get closer to answering one of the most fundamental questions. Why are we here? Why us? Why this particular planet? And on that philosophical note, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, I will see you in the next video.